day I claim the gifts forgiveness gives. Today 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 I claim the gifts forgiveness gives. Well, I'm Miracle Willie, forgiveness teacher from the Ozarks, and we're ready for lesson 334 in A Course in Miracles workbook for students. We're reading from the original edition here on November the 30th of 2023, a Thursday this year. Lesson 334. Today I claim the gifts forgiveness gives. And I want to thank you all for joining me today. Thank you every day that you come and, and sit and learn about the, the way that, that miracle-mindedness thinks, the way that we think when we want to, when we want to let go and let God. Today, I claim the gifts forgiveness gives. You know, by practicing forgiveness, you're entitled to certain gifts. The kingdom of heaven, what greater gift than realization of yourself and all that yourself includes, which is everything you see and think. Everything you see. Uh, everything you think, as long as you qualify the thinking as the thinking that's going on in reality and not the chatter of the ego. Today I claim the gifts forgiveness gives. I will not wait another day to find the treasures which my Father offers me. Illusions must be vain and dreams are gone, even while they are woven out of thoughts that rest on false perception. Let me not accept such meager gifts again today. God's voice is offering the peace of God to all who hear and choose to follow him. Are you hearing and choosing to follow him? This is my choice today. And so I go to find the treasures God has given me. Today I claim the gifts forgiveness gives. And the um, prayer says, I seek but the eternal. For your son can be content with nothing less than this. What then can be his solace, but what you are offering to his bewildered mind and frightened heart, to give him certainty and bring him peace? Today I would behold my brother sinless. Today I would behold my brother sinless. Can we do that? Can we make that our commitment to see our brothers and sisters as innocent? of no, no wrong at all, sinless. That's the way to heaven. That's the way to miracles. That's what forgiveness has as its uh, um, focus. It's, um, you know, working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. See your brother's innocence. That is the, that's, that's the, that's the program in earth, on earth school. <laughs> Today I would behold my brother sinless. This your will for me. For thus will I behold my sinlessness. See it in your brothers in order to see it in yourself. Today I claim the gifts forgiveness gives. And let's see, let's go take a look um, at uh, our associated reading for today. The, what is the ego? The ego is idolatry. The sign of limited and separated self. Born in a body, doomed to suffer and to end its life in death. It is the will that sees the will of God as enemy and takes a form in which it is denied. The ego is the proof that strength is weak and love is fearful. Life is really death, and what opposes God alone is true. Life is really death, and what opposes God alone is true. That's the ego's upside down way of seeing things. But the ego is insane. In fear it stands beyond the everywhere, apart from all, <laughs> in separation from the infinite. 
In its insanity, it thinks it has become a victor over God himself. And in its terrible autonomy, it sees the will of God has been destroyed. It dreams of punishment and trembles at the figures in its dreams. Its enemies who seek to murder it before it can ensure its safety by attacking them. The Son of God is egoless. It's nice that uh, Jesus is helping us to understand what the ego is based on and how it's working. Because, boy, you know, I wouldn't have understood. I didn't understand all this stuff until I learned it from Jesus in this book. The Son of God is egoless. What can he know of madness and the death of God when he abides in him? <laughs> well, what can you know of death? What can you know of madness and the death of God when you abide in him? What can he know of sorrow and of suffering when he lives in eternal joy? Is that your lot? The eternal joy? If not, let that be your, your only goal. The, the surprise that he talked about yesterday. What can he know of fear and punishment, of sin and guilt, of hatred and attack? When all there is surrounding him is everlasting peace, forever conflict-free and undisturbed, in deepest silence and tranquility. To know reality is not, not to see the ego in its thoughts. To know reality is not to see the ego in its thoughts. Its works, its acts, its laws, and its beliefs, its dreams, its hopes, its plans for its salvation, and the cost belief in it entails. Again on that, to know reality is not to see the ego in its thoughts. Its works, its acts, its laws, and its beliefs, its dreams, its hopes, its plans for its salvation, and the cost belief in it entails. In suffering, the price for faith in it is so immense that crucifixion of the Son of God is offered daily at its darkened shrine, and blood must flow before the altar where its sickly followers prepare to die. Yet will one lily of forgiveness change the darkness into light. <laughs> Yet will one lily of forgiveness, just forgive one person, and all that goes away. All that, uh, all that worshiping at the darkened shrine where blood must flow before the altar where its sickly followers prepare to die. Yet will one lily of forgiveness change the darkness into light. See why I like to think of myself as uh, a, a forgiveness teacher? Because this is what I want. This is what you want. You wouldn't be tuned in with me if it wasn't what you wanted. Let's get it. <laughs> Yet will one lily of forgiveness change the darkness and the light, the altar to illusions, to the shrine of life itself. And peace will be restored forever to the holy minds, which God created as his son, his dwelling place, his joy, his love, completely his and completely one with him. Yet will one lily of forgiveness change the darkness into light, the altar to illusions, to the shrine of life itself. And peace will be restored forever to the holy minds, which God created as his son, his dwelling place, his joy, his love, completely his, completely one with him. Today I claim the gifts forgiveness gives. And our manual for teachers reading, what is death? So while you're turning there, let me just tell you about what is going on around the world. Uh, Cities for Life Day, and Cities for Life Day is a worldwide uh, festivity to abolish the death penalty, which I think that'd be a really nice thing to do. I mean, anyway, there's, it, it, Anyway, Cities for Life, Abolish the Death Penalty, International Computer Security Day, National Mason Jar Day, and John Landis Mason invented the Mason Jar on this day in 1858. And it was, uh, it was then manufactured by Ball, started in 1984. Okay, uh, and then um, that's, that's National Mason Jar Day, National Meth Awareness Day, uh, methamphetamine affects the central nervous system, 
It's, it's generally in the form of a white tasteless power, powder that affects the central nervous system and causes an increase in um, action and talkativeness, uh, decreases the appetite, and gives a pleasurable sense of euphoria, making it difficult to quit. So um, I would advise folks not to dabble in meth. <laughs> My brother, he had that experience, uh, and um, it, it ended up taking him down a, a kind of a, well, an addicted dark road, my brother Carl, and uh, he's gone on now, but, uh, but he made a tremendous turnaround and uh, became a, uh, an assistant to those who needed help to get out of it himself. So he, he ended up spending the last probably about 20 years of his life just helping people that had been addicted to meth because he knew what it was like. And I thank my brother Carl for all the things he's given us. Anyway, National Meth Awareness Day, National M Moose Day. <laughs> I didn't know what a moose was. Anyway, it wor the word means foam in French, but it's a, 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 a either a sweet or a savory dish of uh, kind of chocolate mousse is what most people, which is a air, you know, whipped egg and chocolate uh, dessert. National Moose Day. National Personal Space Day. Give everybody their personal space. Be, re be respectful, not leaving your things in a pathway or in people's use, place with their, that they consider their space, you know. And don't be right up, you know, just give people their space. It's a very important thing to do in consideration. Uh, Native Women's Equal Pay Day, and today is the last day of Native American Heritage Month, and it's the day to remember that uh, uh, women need to be treated the same as men if they do the same work. Uh, Perpetual Youth Day, and that's uh, was it's basically uh, Dick Clark who did the American Bandstand out of Philadelphia back in. He started that in 1956. But his birthday, he's, he was born in, uh, in uh, on, I think he was born on the 30th uh, in 1929. And he died in 2012. But Perpetual Youth Day, he brought a lot of people that were young people to stardom. Uh, he did a, did a great work. Uh, stay home because you're well day. Wouldn't recommend it if you have a job unless you can talk to your employer ahead of time. Say, hey, I'm going to take a day off for my wellness. <laughs> uh, Regent Juneberry, also known as a service berry out of edible landscaping. It's the Amelanchier anifolia. Uh, and, and it's the... Regent Juneberry is a hardy Juneberry bush from South Dakota. Very productive bush, has sweet blueberry-like fruits up to a half inch in diameter, good red fall color, profuse white spring flowers, followed by bunches of fruit, makes this an all-season ornamental. Plant a row of this native plant for hedge effect. Zones four through eight. Doesn't really say how big it is, but it seems like I read that it reaches about four foot tall, but I'm not sure about that. I should know more. I think they'll get even a little taller, if, but anyway. So that, and today I claim the gifts, forgiveness gifts. All right, well, let's go look at our reading. What is death? Death is the central dream from which all illusions stem. Is it not madness to think of life as being born, aging, losing vitality, and dying in the end? We have asked this question before, but now we need to consider it still more carefully. It is the one fixed, unchangeable belief of the world that all things in it are born only to die. This is regarded as the way of nature. Not to be raised to question, but to be accepted as the natural law of life. And he has way of nature in quotes and the natural law of life in quotes. He's wanting us to doubt whether this is actually the way of nature. That, that thing, everything has to die. 
the cyclical, the changing and unsure, the undependable and the unsteady, waxing and waning in a certain way upon a certain path, all this is taken as the will of God, and no one asks if a benign creator would will this. Wow. No one asks if a benign creator could will this. Paragraph 2. In this perception of the universe as God created it, it would not be possible to think of him as loving. Oh, my. In this perception of the universe where everything has to die, in this perception of the universe as God created it, it would not be possible to think of him as loving. For who has decreed that all things pass away, ending in dust and disappointment and despair, could but be feared? He holds your little life in his hands but by a thread, ready to break it off without regret or care, perhaps today. Or if he waits, yet is the ending certain. Who loves such a God knows not of love. Who loves such a God knows not of love because he has denied that life is real. Death has become life's symbol. His world is now a battleground where contradiction reigns and opposites makes endless war. Where there is death, is peace impossible? Okay, catch this. We want to be on the, we're on the path of peace, hopefully. That's what you are attracted to more than anything, is your peace and joy as an ever-present state. And in order to have that, we're going to have to rethink about this idea of death, that there is no death. He's going to develop that, but I just wanted to give a little encouragement about this. Paragraph 3. Death is the symbol of the fear of God. His love is blotted out in the idea which holds it from awareness like a shield held to obscure the sun. The grimness of the symbol is enough to show it cannot coexist with God. It holds an image of the Son of God in which he is laid to rest in quotes, laid to rest, <laughs> in devastation's arms, where worms wait to greet him and to last a little while by his destruction. <laughs> worms eating the body. Yet the worms as well are deemed to be destroyed as certainly even they will die, is what he's alluding to or explaining. And so do all things live because of death. Devouring is nature's law of life, in quotes, law of life. God is insane, and fear alone is real. Oh, my. What a predicament we get ourselves into when we follow the ego, thinking death is real. Don't realize that we're eternal beings. We can't die, and we weren't ever born. That's our reality. Paragraph 4. The cure... The curious belief that there is part of dying things that may go on apart from what will die does not proclaim a loving God nor reestablish any grounds for trust. If death is real for anything, there is no life. Death denies life. But if there is reality in life, death is denied. No compromise in this is possible. There is either a God of fear or one of love. Let's read those last couple sentences again. Death denies life, but if there is reality in life, death is denied. That's what we want to start doing is denying death. No compromise in this is possible. There is either a God of fear or one of love. The world attempts a thousand compromises and will attempt a thousand more. Not one can be acceptable to God's teachers because not one could be acceptable to God. <laughs> he did not make death because he did not make fear. Both are equally meaningless to him. Catch that. God did not make death because he did not make fear. Both are equally meaningless to him. Wow, death is meaningless. Paragraph 5, the in quotes reality of death is firmly rooted in the belief that God's Son is a body. The reality, which it's not reality, the re, you know, he's trying to get us to see that this is a dream and this idea that we think we die is, is an imagination, a dream that we can wake up from. Oh, the body will pass away, but that's not your reality. That's not your identity. The reality of death is firmly rooted in the belief that God's Son is a body. 
And if God created bodies, death would indeed be real. But God would not be loving. <laughs> there is no point at which the contrast between the perception of the real world and that of the world of illusions becomes more sharply evident. Death is indeed the death of God if he is love. And now his own creation must stand in fear of him. He is not father but destroyer. He is not creator but avenger. Terrible his thoughts and fearful his image. To look on his creations is to die. In paragraph 6, And the last to be overcome will be death. And that's a quote out of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26. And the last to be overcome will be death. Of course, without the idea of death, there is no world. <laughs> All dreams will end with this one. This is salvation's final goal and the end of all illusions. And in death are all illusions born. What can be born of death and still have life? But what is born of God and still can die? The inconsistencies, the compromises, and the rituals the world fosters in its vain attempts to cling to death and yet to think love real are mindless magic, ineffectual and meaningless. God is, and in him all created things must be eternal. God is. First thing that, that Jesus told Helen when she scribed this book is, she, and she was an atheist, and first thing he told her, God is. <laughs> well, here he's saying it again. God is, and in him all created things must be eternal. You are eternal, whether you know it or not. You are eternal and you won't ever die. Let's let that realization soak in really deep and let it water the soul. Do you not see that otherwise he has an opposite and fear would be as real as love? Again, on those last two sentences, God is. And in him, all created things must be eternal. Do you not see that otherwise he has an opposite and fear would be as real as love? There is no opposite to love, to God. God's everything, and God is love. So love is everything. And that's what we want to start seeing. That's why we want to see, that's why we want to do our lesson today. Today, I claim the gifts forgiveness gives by practicing forgiveness and letting the gifts of forgiveness keep you joyful and peaceful, your, your, your true state that never dies. And the last paragraph, paragraph seven. Teacher of God, your one assignment could be stated thus. He's going to give us an assignment. Our one assignment could be stated thus. Accept no compromise where death plays a part. Accept no compromise where death plays a part. Do you believe in cruelty? Nor let it, do not believe in cruelty whether it's in yourself or somebody else. You don't need to be cruel. And, and if you see something that you think is cruel, look again. It's an appeal for help. It's, it's an exchange of love, from love to love. You've just got to be able to see the miracle. That's what forgiveness opens our minds to, to be able to see it. Teacher of God, your one assignment could be stated thus. Accept no compromise in which death plays a part. Do not believe in cruelty, nor let attack conceal the truth from you. What seems to die has but been misperceived and carried to illusions. Now it becomes your task to let the illusion be brought to the truth. Be steadfast, but in this. Be not deceived by the reality of any changing form. Truth neither moves nor wavers nor sinks down to death and disillusion. And what is the end of death? Nothing but this, the realization that the Son of God is guiltless now and forever. And what is the end of death? Nothing but this, the realization that the Son of God is guiltless now and forever. Nothing but this. But do not let yourself forget it is not less than this that the Son of God is guiltless. See, you brothers and sisters, guiltless as yourself. Today I claim the gifts forgiveness gives. I will not wait another day to find the treasures which my Father offers me. 
Illusions must be vain and dreams are gone even while they are woven out of thoughts that rest on false perception. Let me not accept such meager gifts again today. God's voice is offering the peace of God to all who hear and choose to follow him. This is my choice today. And so I go to find the treasures God has given me. I seek but the eternal, for your son can be content with nothing less than this. What then can be his solace, but what you are offering to his bewildered mind and frightened heart to give him certainty and bring him peace? Today I would behold my brother sinless. This your will for me, for thus will I behold my sinlessness. Today I claim the gifts forgiveness gives. And uh, claim those gifts with your longer practice period, morning and evening, and your hourly remembrance, remembrance and, give, and thanksgiving. Today saying, today I claim the gifts forgiveness gives. Today I claim the gifts forgiveness gives. And today I claim the gifts forgiveness gives. Today I claim the gifts forgiveness gives. And today I claim the gifts forgiveness gives. Today I claim the gifts forgiveness gives. What is the ego? What is the ego? What is the ego? The ego is idolatry, the sign of limited and separated self. Born in a body doomed to suffer and to end its life in death. Ego is insane and fear it stands beyond the everywhere. Apart from all in separation from the infinite. The Son of God is egoless. The Son of God is egoless. What can he know of suffering and the sorrow when he lives in eternal joy? What can he know of suffering and sorrow when he lives in eternal joy? To know reality is not to see the ego and its thoughts. To know reality is not to see the ego and its thoughts. Yet will one lily of forgiveness change the darkness into light? The altar to illusions to the shrine of life itself and peace will be restored forever to the holy mind which God created as his son his dwelling place his joy his love completely his completely one with him I claim the gifts forgiveness gives. Today 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 I claim the gifts forgiveness gives and as it's as we say in Hebrew and Arabic Shalom for Hebrew and Salam for Arabic today I claim the gifts forgiveness gives Shalom Salam peace